The Volume of Time, page 51 to page 60. Abdul Hay al Luknawi died at 39, his books exceeding 110. We need not go far back in time. Imam Abdul Hay al Luknawi of India, who died around 100 years ago, in 1304 AH, at the age of 39, wrote over 110 books, varying in size from large volumes to short treaties, all dealing with beneficial issues and difficult problems. The sage of the Ummah, al fanawis writings exceeded 1,000. The Sheikh of India, Mulana, the sage of the Ummah, Ashraf Ali al fanawi who died around 40 years ago, in 1362, aged 81, had written over 1,000 books. That is the bounty of Allah which he bestows on whom he wills. That was achieved thanks to preservation and use of good time. Indeed, those who know the value of time are the rare successful ones who compose great volumes of work in their short lives. Writings of the early scholars show their conservation of time. Here I shall mention what our Sheikh and scholar, Muhammad Zahid al kawthari may Allah have mercy on him, said concerning a number of the most famous and voluminous tafsirs of the Qur'an the length and quality of which indicates their writers' great dedication to knowledge and their good use of time, which allowed them to write such books, about which one is amazed to hear, let alone read. Some of the great voluminous books of the early scholars in Tafsir and its sciences. Our Sheikh wrote in his book, Maqalat al kawthari regarding some ways of rendering service to the Holy Qur'an. What has been written by the people of knowledge in revealing the precious meanings of the Holy Qur'an cannot be enumerated from their different perspectives in their emphasis of narration or interpretation and the various arts and sciences of the Qur'an with their different approaches and backgrounds in emphasizing a particular aspect of the marvels of the Holy Qur'an. I ask of the honourable readers to allow me to mention some writings of the scholars of this Ummah in this context as an example of their great efforts in writing such books. The tafsir of Imam Abu al-Hasan al-Ashari, known as Al-Mukhtazan, is 70 volumes long, according to Al-Maqrizi's Al-Khitat, while the tafsir of Qadi Abdul Jabbar al-Hamadani, known as Al-Muhid, is 100 volumes long. The tafsir of Abu Yusuf Abdul Salam al Qazwini, known as Hada'iq Thata Bahjah, was at least 300 volumes long. Its author had made it an endowment and chose its headquarters to be the mosque of Imam Abu Hanifa in Baghdad, and later it was amongst the books lost during the Mongol invasion of Baghdad. However, I heard from one of the scholars of India that he saw part of it in the catalogue of one of the libraries. Al Havid ibn Shahin has a tafsir by Yusuf Hadith which is 1000 volumes long. Al Qadi Abu Bakr ibn al Arabi has a tafsir entitled Anwar al Fajr which is around 80,000 pages and it is known to exist in our lands, that is, the libraries of Istanbul and Turkey, but I have not succeeded in finding it despite my long search for it. Ibn al Naqib al Maqdisi, one of the shuyukh of Abu Hayyan, had a tafsir which was around 100 volumes long, some of which can be found in the libraries of Istanbul. As for the largest tafsir to be found today, as far as we know, it is the tafsir of Fatul Manan, attributed to the scholar Qutbuddin al Shirazi, which is 40 volumes long, the first of which is found in Dar al Qutb in Egypt in which one finds his plan for the tafsir, and in the libraries of Muhammad Assad and Ali Basha, Hakim Oghli, in Istanbul, one finds other volumes which make up one complete edition. The scholar Muhammad al-Zahid al-Bukhari wrote around 100 volumes of tafsir, as well as Manhal al-Safi. The scholars of this ummah wrote innumerable tafsir beside the aforementioned ones, from various perspectives, they had also rendered a similar service in compiling the nations which explained the Qur'an 
and clarifying the details of general issues contained within it. The Scholars Who Wrote Profusely The scholar of fiqh and asul, the researcher Muhammad al-Hassan of Morocco, may Allah have mercy on him, in his amazing book, Al-Fikr al-Sami fi tariq al-Fiqh al-Islami, in the biography of Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, wrote about the prolific authors, mentioning Ibn Jarir, Ibn al jawzi and others. I quote from him what he wrote here, some of which which will repeat what has already been said. Ibn Jarir, the greatest author of Islam in terms of the quantity and quality of his writings. Muhammad al-Hassan said that Ibn Jarir achieved excellence, writing abundantly, but with perfection, with wide benefits. He left behind over 350,000 pages of writing, this is the richest academic heritage left as far as we know. So may Allah, the best of creators, be glorified. Thus, he earned an elevated position and none of the early scholars attained the extent of his writing combined with perfection in quality and benefit achieved until this day. Those qualities were not found together in any other scholar, such that it may be said that he is the greatest author of Islam. Al-Baqilani does not sleep until writing 35 pages. In Al-Dibaj al-Mudahab, it is written that Qadi Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn al-Tayyib al-Baqilani prayed 40 rakat every night and would not sleep until writing 35 pages from memory. The numerous works of Ibn Abu dunya Abu Asakir and Ibn Shaheen. Ibn Abu dunya left behind 1000 writings. Ibn Asakir wrote in his tariq in 80 volumes. As Sayyuti said, the most profuse author was Ibn Shahin, who wrote 330 books, including his tafsir, composed of 1000 volumes, and Al Musnad, of 1500 volumes. As Sayyuti said, and this is from among the blessings of contracting time like space, from the heritage of Al Isra and Laylatul Qadr, reported in Al-Minah al-Bidayah. The numerous works of Ibn Hazim and Ibn Abu Hatim al-Razi. Imam Abu Muhammad Ali Ibn Hazim left behind 400 volumes of writing comprising around 80,000 pages. Imam Abu Muhammad Abdul Rahman Ibn Abu Hatim al-Razi wrote many books in fiqh, hadith and history, including his book Al-Musnad comprising 1,000 volumes, which he mentioned in At-Tabaqat al subqiya The numerous works of Al-Hakim al-Nisapuri Abu Abdullah al-Hakim, known as Ibn al-Bayyi, the author of Al-Mustadrak ala al-Sahiyain, wrote around 1500 volumes, including Takhrij al-Sahiyain, Al-Ilal, Al-Amali, Fawaid al-Shuyukh, Tarikh Nisapur, and others. The numerous works of Abul Hassan al Ashari. The writings of Imam Abul Hassan al Ashari reached 50 books of various sizes, mostly on discrediting deviant trends and sects, which is among the most difficult and time consuming subjects. The numerous works of Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn al Qayyim, and al Bayhaqi. Taqi al Din Ibn Taymiyyah wrote 300 books in diverse fields, reaching around 500 volumes. His student Ibn al-Qayyim wrote around 50 volumes of various sizes. Imam al-Bayhaqi wrote 1000 volumes, all original, beneficial and unparalleled, and he fasted for 30 years. The numerous works of Muhammad ibn Suhnun al-Maliki Muhammad ibn Suhnun, the famous Tunisian scholar, left behind his great tome of 100 volumes in, in fiqh, biographies, history, and other sciences, as well as Ahkam al-Qur'an and others. The numerous works of Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi al-Ma'arifi. Imam Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi al-Ma'arifi, buried in Fez, wrote his voluminous tafsir in 80 volumes, as well as other books including commentaries on Al-Timrati's hadith compilation, Al-Muwata, and Ahkam al-Qur'an, as well as Al-Qawasim wal-Awasim and Al-Mahsul fil Usul, all unique books of extraordinary quality.
the numerous works of Abu Jafar at tahawi Imam Abu Jafar at tahawi wrote many books and wrote 1,000 pages on one question, whether the pilgrimage of the Prophet wasallam was Qiran, Ifrad or Tamatu. And this is in no way unique among the scholars of Islam. The numerous works of Abu Ubaidah, Ibn Suraj and Ibn Habib al-Andalusi. The writings of Abu Ubaidah, Ma'mar ibn al-Muthana reached 200 in various sciences. The writings of Ibn Suraj reached 400. The writings of Abdul Malik ibn Habib, the scholar of al-Andalus, reached a thousand books, mentioned in Naf al-Tib. The voluminous works of some of the early scholars. Their writings comprised many volumes. The book of Ibn al jawzis grandson, Murat al-Saman, in history, is in 40 volumes. Tarikh Baghdad of al-Khatib was 14 volumes long. al aghani 20 volumes long. While Al-Kamil of Ibn al-Athir was made of 12 volumes. Shar al-Nabat of Abu Hanifa al-Dinawari was 60 volumes long. And the writings of Yaqub ibn Ishaq al-Kindi, known as the philosopher of the Arabs, reached 231 books. And in fact exceeded 300 books in philosophy, medicine, engineering and many other sciences. However, they varied in length from 10 to hundreds of pages, bearing in mind the difficulty of obtaining writing material in their times. The numerous works of some of the later scholars are not equivalent to the early ones. As for the later scholars, writing materials more accessible to them, yet they did not reach the level of their predecessors, such as al hafid ibn al-Hajr, author of Fat al-Bari, al-Isabah and others, al dhahabi or as sayuti whose writing exceeded 400. But most of them were of shorter length, down to a page or two. Another scholar, whose writings were even more numerous, was Sheikh Abdul Fayyid Mohibuddin Murtada al husseini al Wasiti al Zabiri al Hanafi, who was born and brought up in India and lived in Egypt. Sufficient are Shar al Qamus and Shar al Ihya as proof of that. Two widely beneficial books, which were popular in the Muslim world, of high quality and meticulous care. That was a quick note regarding those who wrote profusely as narrated by scholar Al-Hajawi, may Allah have mercy on him, written in the context of his mentioning the numerous writings of Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. Conserving one's time lengthens one's lifetime and enriches one's legacy. What incited me to include that was my wish to explain how the immense flow and abundant amazing books was written and how they were gathered. It was all thanks to the voluming time, conserving it, and managing it without losing an hour or a moment. For through good time management, one's legacy grows and prospers and one's lifetime is prolonged and short times and lives are blessed by Allah who bestows his bounty on whomever he wills and he is the owner of mighty grace. I conclude this section on scholars who valued their time, making use of every moment, benefiting and producing the sweetest of fruits of knowledge by including a brief biography of Al-Hafid Abu al-Qasim ibn Asakir al-Lamashki, for it would motivate one's determination and wake up the heedless. The Immensity of Al-Hafid ibn Asakir's Contribution to Islamic Literature Al-Hafid Abu al-Qasim ibn Asakir al-Lamashki, Ali ibn al-Hasan, born in Damascus in 499 AH, died there in 571 AH. May Allah have mercy on him, made use of every moment of his time, such that academic institutions are unable to print all of his contributions to Islamic heritage. He wrote them alone, by hand. He researched, wrote, classified, ordered and edited them, presenting to people a lasting legacy, a wonder of his vast knowledge and amazing memory strong determination and discipline, and talent in abundance and unique writing. I include here a brief overview of his biography taken from three books, restricting myself to passages related to his wide travels, abundant writing, 
and use of every moment of his life. Historian and judge Ibn Khaliqan wrote in Wayafat al-Ayan in his biography, Ibn Asakir was one of the most prominent scholars of Hadith of Asham in his time, and one of the most prominent Fuqaha of the Shafi Madhab. He was particularly dedicated to the science of Hadith and became known for it. He strove hard in compiling the Hadith such that he gathered more than any other scholar. He travelled widely to various lands, met with scholars, and was the companion of al hafid Abu Sa'id Abdul Karim ibn As-Sam'ani in his journey. The number of scholars he met in various places in the land of Islam reached 7,000. He was trustworthy and of high morals, gathering hadith and their chains of narrations. He studied in Baghdad, then returned to Damascus, then travelled to Khorasan and went to Nisapur, Harat, Ifsahan and Al-Jibal. He wrote many beneficial books and authenticated the chain of many hadith. He had deep knowledge of hadith and was gifted in compilation and writing. He wrote 80 volumes of Tariq al-Dimashq, the history of Damascus, which is a book following the style Tariq Baghdad of Khatib al-Baghdadi in terms of his criteria in choosing whom to quote. Yet it surpassed it many times in size, scope, comprehensiveness and benefit. When that tariq became well known, a sheikh and scholar al hafid Zaki al-Din Abu Muhammad Abdul Adim al-Mundari, the scholar of hadith in Egypt, said, I believe that this man made the intention to write this book when he was mature enough to think, and began to gather information from that time, for otherwise life is too short for one to write such a book after becoming preoccupied with teaching and narration. He had spoken the truth indeed, for whoever contemplates the tariq realises this. For how could one find the time to write such a book, considering it represents only what he finally selected and authenticated following several stages of writing and innumerable drafts? Furthermore, he has other important writings and interesting volumes. The number of books of al hafid Abu al-Qasim ibn Asakir exceeded 50 books, including the 80-volume Tariq Madinat Dimashq, as mentioned above. The Great Resolve of Ibn Asakir in his extensive travels in Muslim lands. al dahabi wrote in Tadkhirat al-Hufad, He is the great Imam and scholar of Hadith, the Mahadith of Asham, the pride of the Imams, Abul Qasim Ibn Asakir, the author of many books, including Atariq al-Kabir, he was born in early 499 AH and started learning hadith in 505 AH under the care of his father and brother, Imam Diyahuddin Hibatullah. He studied hadith in Damascus and travelled at the age of 20 and he studied in Baghdad, then in Mecca, then in Al-Kufa, Nisapur, Isfahan, Mar, Harat and compiled Al-Arba'in Al-Buldaniyya. 40 hadith from 40 shayukh from 40 countries and the number of his shayukh reached 1300 scholars which included over 80 female scholars many people narrated on his authority including his companion on his journey abu sad al samani then al dahabi enumerated his writings which reached around 50 books and he dictated in circles of knowledge 408 lessons each equivalent to a book his son the scholar of Hadith, Baha ad-Din al-Qasim, said, My father, may Allah have mercy on him, regularly went to congregational prayer and to recitation, completing the recitation of the Qur'an every week, and completing it every day in Ramadan. He used to do itikaf in the eastern minaret of the mosque of Damascus. He offered a lot of supererogatory prayers and was often engaged in dhikr. He dedicated himself during the middle of the night of Shaban, and the nights of the two Eids to prayer and dhikr, and he brought himself to account for every moment that passed. For forty years, since his shuyukh granted him qualification to narrate and teach, he dedicated himself fully to compiling and teaching, even during his leisure and solitude. al hafid Abu Ala al-Hamadani said, Abu al-Qasim ibn Asakir was known in Baghdad as a shining flame, due to his intelligence, enthusiasm and dedication. Abul Mawahib ibn Sasra 
said to Ibn Asakir, Did our master see anyone like him? He replied, Does not Allah say, Ascribe no purity to yourselves? I said, Allah also said, And proclaim the grace of your Lord. He said, If one were to say, My eyes have never seen anyone like myself, he would have been truthful. Then Abul Mawahib said, And I say, I have never seen anyone like him, and no one who was endowed with all his qualities, such as following one mission for forty years, always praying congregational prayers in the first row, except when he had an excuse, regularly observing itikaf in the month of Ramadan and the ten days of Dhul Hijjah, having no interest in acquiring property and building houses, for he avoided all that, and avoided seeking positions of imams and preachers, and rejected them when offered to him, and dedicated himself to enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, not fearing the blame of any blamer.